Hello guys, you are a student at college or university pursuing or studying electronics. This is your channel where electronics is discussed the left, right and center. Welcome and enjoy. Welcome to our fourth video as well as the second video of presentation on PN junction. This time we are going to look at diode circuit models. Motion Marufu is my name and motion Marufu at gmail.com is my email address. Plus 2637175358866 is my WhatsApp number. Guys, I hope you are going to enjoy this application of circuit theory or electrical engineering technology. Knowledge. Enjoy it. In this video presentation, the following are our objectives. You must be able to list and describe the three diode models and the applications of each. Then illustrate the three diode models with the aid of circuit diagrams. Then you must be able using characteristic curves to illustrate the operation of the three models. And the fourth one, using Kirchhoff voltage law and current law, you must be able to perform simple calculations of simple diode circuits. No need to panic when you hear Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law circuit theory. These are just simple diode calculations. Then the last one, but not the least one, you must be able to plot a load line on diode characteristic curve and establish the quiescent point. Introduction. What is a real diode? A real diode is a physical diode which you would normally use in a, a practical circuit. And we know that it is also known as a PN junction diode or simply a diode. What then is a diode model? This is a theoretical simplification of a real diode. And, and uh, is it important? Yes. It eliminates unwanted information, making calculations and explanations easier. You will see it. So, you may be required to replace diodes in a practical circuit by an equivalent circuit, simply for analysis purposes. And we call that equivalent circuit, and it will be on paper. We call it a circuit model. And in this case, we are looking at a diode circuit model. And there are three methods of replacing a diode that we are going to look in this presentation. We are first going to look at the ideal diode. And you know what the word ideal means, an English word. So we have got, a, if you remember forward biasing and reverse biasing, we said a diode conducts when forward biased and it does not conduct when reverse biased. So we are saying the ideal diode is viewed as an open switch when it is reverse biased and at a closed switch when forward biased. Why? Reverse a switch does not turn the light on when it is open or when it is off, hence it is representing a reverse biased diode. An open switch does not turn the light on, so the diode does not conduct when it is reverse biased, hence it is represented by an open switch. A closed switch turns the light on and it is representing a forward biased Let's look at the characteristics of an open and a closed switch. An open switch simply means an off switch. So it has got infinite resistance, therefore does not allow current to flow. And please take note of this. Full applied voltage develops across an open switch or any component in an electrical circuit. Then... A closed switch or an on switch, it has no resistance, it allows maximum current to flow and the voltage drop across it is zero. Why? Because the voltage is close to I R and R is close to zero because it has no resistance. So the voltage drop across it is zero. So we are saying the second model for a forward biased switch is a closed switch. And the second model for a reverse bias the switch is an open switch or an off switch. Just that the characteristics of an ideal diode will look at forward characteristics and the reverse characteristics, forward characteristics. We said the second model of a forward biased diode is an on switch or a closed switch. And we are saying 
it has got no resistance. In other words, maximum current flows through the diode since it is a, an on switch. The third characteristic, the diode does not limit the current through it, so maximum current flows then. The third characteristic, the diode has no voltage drop across its terminals. Why? It is very important to take note. Why? Because voltage is found from I times R. So if R is zero, it means that V is equal to zero. Then reverse bias characteristics, we are saying the diode does not conduct, so it behaves as an open switch or an off switch. And we know that an off switch has infinite resistance, which means no current flows through an reverse bias the diode or an open switch then the second characteristic the diode is no does not pass current we know there's no current that flows through an in a, 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 an infinite resistance then the third characteristics the voltage drop across the diode is equal to the applied voltage it is important to take note of those characteristics because we'll be referring to them when we do calculations uh, still on diode ideal diode characteristics and we are saying this is a forward biased diode why because we have got a positive connected to the anode and a negative connected to the uh, cathode in other words this will be representing a battery or a cell and our our forward current is going in this direction and a reverse biased diode, we've got the negative terminal of the applied voltage being connected to the anode, the positive terminal of the applied voltage being connected to the uh, cathode. So this diode is reverse biased. The equivalent circuit or the second model of a forward biased diode is a closed switch. This is a switch, guys. This is the symbol of a switch. So it is a closed. So current will flow in this direction but for a reverse biased diode it is an open switch as you can see or an off switch so we call it an open switch so no current will flow so if you are just asked to give the second module of, of a forward biased diode it's a closed switch second model of a reverse biased diode is an open switch as shown then device resistance for a forward bias diode because it is a, a closed the switch the voltage across this sorry the resistance is zero this is a wire while for a an open switch or a reverse bias the diode it's infinite resistance therefore device current is zero for an infinite resistance while for a forward bias the diode device current is limited only by the current limiting resistor then for a voltage the voltage across a short circuit is zero while the voltage across an open switch or a reverse bias is equal to the applied voltage guys this is very very important these characteristics they must stick in your mind they are very very important because we we'll use them when we do circuits of a, or when we do diode circuits Fig 1.2, ideal diode characteristic curve. You remember characteristic, VI characteristic curves for a, a diode. This is an ideal one. Why are we saying this is an ideal one? You remember the knee point or the knee voltage and we said 0.3 for a, for a device made from silicon and 0.7 for a device made from germanium sorry from silicon rather and we are saying for an ideal diode because the voltage drop across it is equal to zero it means if when a diode is forward biased and you are measure and you measure the voltage across it you will find zero so the voltage across it will be zero and the current will not be zero in other words it will be increasing or it will be a maximum but we are saying so these are the forward characteristics for the reverse characteristics we are saying the voltage is equal to the supplied voltage which is equal to the reverse voltage but current will be equal to zero current will be equal to zero because voltage is along the x-axis and the resistance is along the y-axis so these are the VI characteristics for an ideal diode. 
the discussion of the characteristic curve. If we increase here, reverse current remains at zero, meaning that a reverse base diode is an open circuit, a switch or an off switch, because there's no uh, current flowing through the diode. The applied voltage is dropped across the terminals of the device. In other words, if you take a voltmeter and you measure the voltage across a reverse bias diode, it will be equal to the applied voltage. For a forward bias diode, we are saying for an ideal diode, VF or the voltage across the diode is assumed to be zero. Therefore, the diode starts conducting when instantaneously the applied voltage is just greater than zero, not at VB or at a cut in a voltage and we saw it conducting at almost zero and the voltage drop across the diode is zero also i think it's now uh, clear we are now going to look at a, a practical diode and a practical diode has got any voltage across it vk so vk is not equal to zero but at the present moment we are still assuming that it is behaving like a, a closed switch, hence VF is equal to, sorry, RF is equal to zero. Under such a, a, a scenario, it means that if RF is equal to zero and knee voltage or cutting voltage, also known as the barrier potential, is not equal to zero, it means that when we plot the VI characteristic curve, VF will, will not be equal to zero. Forward voltage VF. A slight voltage is developed across a forward biased PN junction diode. It has got an effect on the characteristic curve, as illustrated in the next slide. Uh, let's look at the two uh, characteristic curve graphs. One is for the first one is for an ideal diode, and the second one is for a, a practical diode. Take note that knee voltage or cutting voltage is approximately equal to 0.7. And the assumption made is it is made of a silicon because a silicon has a, a barrier voltage or any voltage of 0.7. So we are saying the point where IF suddenly increases is labeled VK in the figure or in the second graph. This, this label is commonly used to identify what we call the knee voltage and knee voltage VK is often used to describe the point on a voltage of VI characteristic curve where a current suddenly increases or decreases depending in which direction you are going. So for an ideal model VK is equal to zero and for a, a practical diode VK is equal to 0. 7. Go through the slide and see if it makes sense, otherwise I have gone through it.
a practical diode circuit model and its characteristic curve. As we can see, for a forward biased a diode, we said VB or VF or knee voltage, you can use any of those designations. It's not equal to zero, hence we have got a voltage. This is the voltage across the diode, which is measured by a voltmeter when the diode is forward biased or when it is conducting a current. So this voltage is the same as this voltage. And for a silicon PN junction, it's 0 0.7. And for a germanium, it's 0 0.3. It is also the, the barrier voltage. But for a reverse biased a diode, what are we saying? We are saying the switch is as good as an open circuit. Hence, a reverse current is equal to zero if for any increase in reverse voltage. So for VI characteristic, current is equal to zero until the supply voltage is the same as VB. And when it, when it is not equal to VB, we are going to have a sudden rise in forward current. So that's the characteristic curve or the VI characteristic which is this one for a forward biased a practical diode and this is the the circuit model for a forward biased diode this is also a circuit model for a reverse biased diode the last uh, a diode circuit module that we are going to look at is called a complete a diode a practical model and VF or forward voltage is, equal to, is not equal to zero and also forward resistance is not equal to zero. Please take note of those conditions. They are the ones that that determine the VI characteristic as well as the circuit diagram. So this is a forward biased a diode and equivalent a circuit and this is a reverse bias a diode equivalent circuit, also known as the circuit module. So for a reverse for a reverse bias, we are seeing the diode behaves as an open circuit, hence the open circuit, or it behaves as an open switch. For a forward bias diode, we have got an RF which is forward resistance and we've got a cut in voltage V gamma. This stands for VB. So we are saying cut in voltage or new voltage is not equal to zero and forward resistance is also not equal to zero. Hence we've got an IF flowing in the uh, right direction. There's no IF there. IF is close to zero. Please take note of the a VI characteristics of a, a forward biased as well as reverse biased diode. For a reverse a biased diode, an increase in reverse voltage results in no increase in current or reverse current rather. So reverse current remains zero for a reverse biased a diode. But for cut in voltage, see what is happening now. We now have the, this slanting effect is now due to RF, which is not equal to zero. It doesn't go, there is no certain increase in forward current this time because of the effect of forward resistance. A diode circuit analysis using Kirchhoff's voltage law, you remember the prerequisite. And please, at the moment, let's just ignore the directions of the arrows. I don't want them to confuse you, but we are assuming conventional flow of current, co current flowing from positive to negative, but through the load or else it will become a short circuit. So what are we saying? Supply voltage is E. If current flows in this direction, we are going to have a drop across the a diode, which is our VB. In other words, the diode will conduct when our voltage has exceeded the knee voltage. In other words, knee voltage must reduce to zero because 
the depletion region would have disappeared. So we are saying supply voltage E minus the drop across the diode is shown minus the, the drop across the resistor VR give us zero. If we move the diode voltage to the other side of the equal sign, it becomes a positive. And mathematically, it becomes E minus the voltage across the resistor gives us the drop across the diode. Right, but we know that the, the voltage across the diode is equal to diode current times forward resistance. Hence, we are going to substitute this in this formula. So we are going to say supply voltage E minus the drop across the diode, which is ID RF minus VRS goes to zero. So how do you calculate diode current? Your diode current becomes, using your mathematics knowledge, it becomes E minus VD divided by RF. That's diode circuit analysis using Kirchhoff's voltage law. I think it makes sense. Another very important concept in electronics, a load line. What basically is a load line? A load line is a tool that is used to find the exact value of diode current and voltage. And we are going to derive the equation for the load line from the circuit shown. We've got supply voltage of Vs, a current limiting resistor of Rs, and a voltage drop of Vd across the diode. From Kirchhoff's voltage law, if you must be able to derive an equation for Kirchhoff's voltage law from a given circuit. We are saying supplied voltage Vs in the clockwise direction minus the drop across the current limiting resistor RS minus the drop across the diode must give us a zero and such an equation is called Kirchhoff's voltage law. But we know that the current that is flowing th through the resistor which we have designated as IR is the same as the current flowing through the diode. So we are going to designate that a current as ID. Let's move to the next slide. More on load line, right? VRS is the voltage across the resistor, and how do you find it from Ohm's law? Is the current through the diode, which is the same as the current through the resistor, since it is a series circuit times RS, which is our co current limiting resistor. We are going to use this. This is going to replace the voltage across the resistor. So we are going to say V supply voltage Vs minus ID RS minus Vd according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, it must give us zero. Right? Uh, mathematically, we have moved this to the right side of the equation. So it's going to be ID RS is equal to Vs minus Vd. It's correct. Then how do you calculate a diode current? We simply say supply voltage Vs minus the, vo the, the drop across the diode, which according to our circuit is Vd. It can be cut in voltage V gamma or Vk, please take note, divided by the series resistor or the current limiting resistor. So this is the current through the diode and it is the same as the current through the resistor. It is a series circuit. Please take note and the current through a series circuit according to our circuit theory is the same. Please take note of the following. If we include forward the resistance, the denominator will not just be equal to RS. In other words, it will be RS plus RF instead of just RS, where RS is the current limiting resistor that avoids damage to our diode. You are going to see why these calculations are going to help us to draw a load line. So we are now going to use an example to find diode current. Please take note that this diode current is the same as IR, which is the current through the resistor. Why? Because this is a series circuit. These two are showing the ground. So this point is the same as this point. So our Conventional flow of current is going to be through the resistor, through the diode, and back to the battery. The circuit becomes complete. So for an ideal diode, you remember the circuit module for an ideal diode, we said VF or diode, VD is equals to zero and RF is equals to zero. So this is equal to zero because there is no, this will be acting as a switch or as a wire. 
So we we'll say 2, which is our supply voltage, minus 0, divided by the uh, current limiting resistor, which is 100, is going to give us 20 milliamps. Can you use your calculator to establish that? You must be able to convert from amps to milliamps. And the assumption is we are assuming an ideal diode. If we plot this on the characteristic curve, we are saying Vf or V, or V gamma only voltage is equal to zero and ID is equal to two or 20. This is going to give us the point on the vertical axis. And this point is called the saturation because that's where maximum current is flowing with two volts being across the series current limiting resistor. By calculating a diode current Not ID, we would have managed to only to plot point a point on the y-axis or vertical axis to find a point on the x-axis, which is so equal to Vf or Vd. And in this case, it is equal to 2 volts because there is no drop across the diode. So the whole 2 volts are going to drop across the diode and not across... Sorry. They are going, two volts is going to drop across the resistor RS. And we are going to substitute this in the equation. What do we get? ID is equal to 2 minus 2 divided by 100. And this is going to give us 0 milliamps. This point, ID is equal to 0 milliamps and V is equal to 2 volts, is plotted on the horizontal axis along forward voltage. And we call it the cutoff point Y because drain current, sorry, because ID, which is Remember our diode current, is equal to zero. We are now going to draw a load line on the so transfer characteristics, I repeat, on the, the transfer points. characteristic the point and find our, the point, point where our load line intersects the VI line. characteristic. Let's go line. to the next From slide. The point where it cuts, the point where it cuts, the or the point where it intersects the characteristic curve is what we call the operating point or the uh, Q point. Take note, guys, it's not difficult as long as you know your Kirchhoff voltage law and your Ohm's law is so easy, but you must be able to convert amps to milliamps because normally your vertical axis will be in milliamps on the characteristic curve graph. And the load line is commonly known as the DC load line. Why? Why? Because normally our circuit will be powered by DC voltage. So the way DC represents the operating conditions and the operating conditions show that it is a DC circuit and there's no AC voltage present. Load line is because the line slopes as we have seen and it represents the reciprocal of the load resistance. You can try to make sense out of that. I, th I think it's clear mathematically if you follow what is happening to the voltage, what is happening to the a current rather as we are increasing the voltage. Then we've got factors that affect our load line and our Q point, which is our quiescent operating point. One, the DC supply voltage, we saw it, then it also depends on temperature, it also depends on the load resistance. Then this point varies from device to device, that is from transistor to transistor. But would, in the Q point must not change. We must, uh, each circuit or each transistor as we'll see in the near future has got its best operating point. If it is an amplifier, it must not distort or it must not cut. Therefore, we have got the best operating point and those are the factors that determine it.